Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Harner, and joining me today is Jason Worley, who is a new member of the Bella Vista Garden Club, and he's also the owner of Hydro and Brew. And um, today we're going to be talking about um, the hydroponics 101. It's just yeah. the basic hydroponics, how to grow plants without soil. <coughs> so. Um, there isn't really too much else uh, we can be doing in our garden in January, but we were talking a little bit about um, the gardening in the, in the early part of the year, what we had to pay attention to. Um, but, and there aren't too many activities going on with gardening, but you can always go and watch the, uh, walk the trails at Crystal Bridges if there's a nice uh, warm day in January. Uh, there's wonderful um, plants still um, showing up at the at the trails at Crystal Bridges, so that's a good time to do that. But today we're really talking about growing plants without soil, and I don't know much about hydroponics. I'm always in the dirt, but um, uh, Jason's going to tell us, you know, how we do this, how we grow without without soil. Well, so. uh, hydroponics is definitely a, a soilless way of gardening. Um, you know, and this time of the year, you mentioned something about not a whole lot of gardening going on, and right. you can definitely bring it indoors if you wanted to, and, and keep that year-round garden going, and um, keep your veggies going, or just some some nice good house plants, some some nice beautiful foliage, yeah. some flowers, whatever whatever your so needs. So just be. about anything will grow in the hydroponics. Yeah, yeah, just about anything. Okay. Um, and then you've got lettuce growing here. This lettuce is beautiful. Yeah, right it's here. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I got a tray of lettuce. It's just a variety mixture of lettuce. Um, yeah, it, they're just grown in these four-inch Rockwell cubes. So these are one just more. the cubes that are... Yeah, uh, each plant is in each, each cube. You got okay. one four-inch Rockwell cube per plant. Um, I start them off in um, one-inch Rockwell cubes as the seeds start. And then from there, I put the plugs right into the four-inch cubes. Okay, now the one-inch plugs are, I think there's some... Yeah, the one-inch plugs are in the tray right They'll there, that big slab. If you can see those down here, and then um, next to that are the four-inch cubes with the holes cut out. You just put the one-inch cubes right into those. Okay, so you just go from one to the other. Yep. And then you've got some seedlings started there too. Yeah, those are actually some microgreens right there. Um, it's just a variety mixture of some microgreens, some spring peas, and a variety mixture of lettuce again. And those are harvested in within 15 days, so those are so about those 10 are days. So those are actually in potting soil? Yeah, that's in soil right there. Um, okay. Do you, you can, use, use a special kind of potting soil or anything? Um, I, I do. I use an all-organic potting soil. Um, it's basically where I don't have to use any type of nutrients throughout the, the, its life cycle because those okay. are harvested within 15 days. Okay, so after 15 days you'll put them in the little... I'll actually harvest those um, in 15 days oh. and, and eat those. Um, okay. the, the micrograins are, are said to have uh, more, more vitamins and nutritional value at a younger state of life, oh. basically. So, that's so the older they get, the less nutrients they have. You, correct. You can start losing like vitamin A's and stuff like that, oh, vitamin no B's, idea. Yeah. or just less of it in, in the, the plants, the vegetables themselves. So. Oh. Oh, that's interesting because I had no idea that the smaller plants would have more nutrients. Yeah, it is. It is pretty interesting. It's, uh, yeah. Microgreens, a lot of people are really starting to get into these microgreens lately because mm -hmm. um, they're small, they're compact, and you can kind of do a really good, nice vertical garden with it so you can get a, like a stainless steel shelf or steel shelving in. And, uh, but you also need the lights to go with it. Yeah, you do need lighting. Um, Something like this doesn't require any type of high-powered lighting. Um, CFLs, T5 fluorescent lightings. Um, something that's energy saving that doesn't use a whole lot of heat or put out a whole lot of heat. But these you grow under the um, yes, the high, the, uh, under the the, uh, the the lighting itself. And um, the neat thing behind that is you're basically you're putting your light time at whatever time you want to set it at. So if you want to keep stuff in a vegetative state like this, um, you basically keep your light hours for 18 hours a day. 
and that's and how you, you just end put up. it on a timer. Yeah, you keep that on a timer, okay. um, and that's how you end up with your faster growth. And then how far how far away from the plant is the light itself? Um, fluorescence, you want to keep those within a few inches, so about four to six inches so roughly. So you just have the fluorescence, like, you know, right up in the yeah. four to six inches away from the So plant. fairly close, basically. Fairly close. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you got other high-powered lighting, the um, HID lighting, which is high-pressure sodium lighting and, and metal halide lighting, which can put out a whole lot of heat. Um, they're great, but they're more used for stuff that you're going to bear fruit with. Oh, so okay. like tomatoes, cucumbers, you know, stuff like that. So that you can grow gonna... tomatoes all year round in your Oh, house. yeah, yep. And something like this um, system right here that I got the house plants uh, grown in, um, those can basically, that's a good system for growing big plants in. So something like cucumbers, tomatoes, um, anything that you know you, that's going to grow big and, and yield okay. a lot of. So that's the um, the whole system right there. Yeah, this is a, this is a hydroponic system itself right here. Okay. Um, it's and a how do you water that then? That's actually um, sitting inside the reservoir itself. So it's two buckets sitting inside of one another. Okay. And the water sits inside the bottom bucket. This camera has to be replaced. And the um, it's got a top ring drip system, so it's a, it's a top feed system. Uh -huh. So it pulls the water with an uh, air pump from the bottom and then brings it up top and, t and feeds it from the top. And it's a constant re recirculating system doing that. And then where do you put the water? Is there, I see a tube or something. Yeah, there's a, there's tube. a tube. That's a sight gauge. So that'll tell you basically what your water what level your is water at. What your water level is. And when to change it roughly or when it needs to be changed if it's... If it starts getting murky or right, something. Right, exactly. And I, I roughly change it one week to every two weeks. I see. So, and uh, it's a great system for big plants. Um, real, real easy, real simple. Um, doesn't have any high-powered water pumps. It's, it's actually all driven by air. So that's oh, the neat thing behind that too. Um, and then back to the lettuce as well. This, these have actually been grown in these trays the whole entire time in these trays. I just hand, hand water them. So these, this is a really simple way of hydroponic So you just water, put water in the tray yep. and then it soaks it up into the cubes. Yeah, correct. And then what about nutrients for that? The nutrients, I do use nutrients and there's, there's a variety of nutrients out there to use on the market. Um, um, so yeah, I do use a nutrient-enriched water to feed them. Okay. Now you have all the supplies at your at your shore at your shop. Yes. And where is your shop located? Bella Vista. It's right off of uh, 71 there. Um, it's called Sweet Southview Shopping Center. And um, if you guys are familiar with um, the Bella Vista flea market at all, it's actually right there within that same. So strip it's mall. like across from Allen's? Yeah, correct. Okay, right, right. across from Allen's. Everybody knows where Allen's is yeah. in Bella Vista. <laughs> okay. So it's right across from Allen's. Okay. And then once you start a system, you have larger systems too, I know. Oh, yes. That are really in involved. Uh, this is really just hydroponics 101, just the basics. And, um, but there's a lot more systems. Now you also brew beer. Oh yeah, too. Yep, it's called Hydro and Brew. So we do the hydroponic gardening and the home brewing as well. Um, we don't do the beer brewing there, but uh, we supply all the the products to do your own beer making and brewing, um, wine making as well. So whether it be equipment or the ingredients, we we supply all that stuff as well. I see, because I just um, saw something on the uh, on TV about the microbrewers, mm -hmm. and it used to be that there was. 10 or something in 2008, and now there's one, grow one microbrewer established every day. Every day there's a new one. So microbrewing is becoming really, really popular, and more people are doing it at home. So Yes, um, it's, it's you can coming. You do individualing um, beers with different tastes and different flavors. And yeah, craft beer is uh, definitely the one thing that uh, is really starting to make its way in in the U.S. Right. <laughs> throughout the whole nation pretty much. But uh, yeah, um, in, within Northwest Arkansas, just in the last year, I mean, we got, you know, since it's become a wet county, mm -hmm. we got two or three microbreweries that have already popped up in Benton County itself. Yeah. So. But brewing at home, could you always brew at home even though we had the, the laws, oh, yeah. the liquor laws? You could still brew at home. Yeah, at one point it was illegal to brew your own beer, but it's been legal for 15 years or so now. Um, and each state varies. They all made their own, you know, 
it, you can brew your own beer at home per state, basically. Right. Well, you know, my aunt used to always make her own wine, so I don't yeah. know if, she, if it was legal or not, but, you know, the farmers always had their own little gooseberry wines and things. <laughs> but um, yeah. this is really interesting. Now, when they go to your shop and they want to brew the beer, you're going to give them all the instructions about how to do it. You have all the supplies. Yes, and, correct. And yeah. how long does it take to brew a a batch of beer? Um, to brew a batch of beer it can take anywhere from two months to, I mean, uh, two weeks to a month. And oh. um, to, to the point where it's drinkable, it can take up to two months, potentially. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, but on average, you're drinking it within a month, a month and a half. I see. And right. then these batches are a couple gallons? or um, five On gallons? average, the most is five gallons that most people make, um, just because that's a lot of recipes and, and the equipment is geared towards. Um, there are some one one gallon equipment kits and, and recipes out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do the one gallon more towards the wine because the wine's a lot easier. There's no cooking involved versus the beer. You kind of you get your whole boiling, um, cooking part of it versus the wine. You kind of just mix sugar, juice, and hit your yeast, and that's pretty much it. Right. <laughs> okay. Now you also said that. Um, uh, growing herbs is real easy with this system too, and everybody likes to have fresh herbs, um, you know, when they're cooking all all winter. And you supply Allen's with uh, herbs. Yes, actually, I have been supplying Allen's um, with some uh, basil, some fresh basil, um, uh, for the past couple months probably. Uh, it's been working out pretty good, and I'm trying to get my my herb production going a little bit more now, and supply them with a little bit more like thyme. Um, some oregano, um, so rosemary. So when, when they buy it there, it's just in a little bag with the roots attached, and it's just grown in water. And then they take it home and put it back in water, and it'll just keep growing. Right? Yes, correct. Because I do that with my basil. I cut the, you know, make cuttings, and I make more plants. Because mm -hmm. you just put it in water, and it'll root. Yeah, that's so. the thing is a lot of people don't even realize that you're kind of doing your own hydroponic gardening without even thinking about right. it. Right. I you guess know. I was doing hydroponic. <laughs> I didn't know it. Yeah, because, you know, even from, you know, I mean, I've had my mother show me, you know, oh, you just, you know, something a plant would break off and, oh, no, it's still good, you know, and she puts it in a cup of water and, you know, a week or two later It'll it's got root. roots coming out of right. it. Right, so you saved the plant. And I didn't even realize that when I was younger yeah. until I, you know, started getting into it myself. Well, so. I know basil is very easy to root yeah, from yeah. cuttings. That's one of the easiest ones. Yeah, there are definitely and other varieties of plants that are somewhat harder. Now, lettuce wasn't, won't do that. No, lettuce, is, you can't... Um, can't clip it and, and reroot it. Um, okay. So that's one thing that just doesn't do that. So you just have to know the plants that will, you know, work like that. Right. Most most plants, you know, um, anything like lettuce and spinach and stuff like that won't do it. Um, but you got tomatoes, uh, cucumbers can do it as well. So a cutting off of a tomato will start to root. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, that's actually what I typically do. I'll start a tomato early, you know, colder in the colder season, early in the year, um, get that to basically grow out to a few feet tall and uh -huh. then I'll take all my clippings get those to root and then those would be my tomatoes for the for oh. the season for outside and then, and then use those outside yep and I usually sometimes I'll even because I deal with the indoor lighting I'll usually grow those for about two three feet tall before I even put them outside and then and by you the time start I, getting tomatoes oh yeah early yeah. in the season so. oh that's wonderful so you kind of get a jump start on that whole that whole gardening season right. on it, basically Okay. That's the nice thing about that. Okay. Is there anything else we need to know then? I mean, these supplies are all there at your shop, and we can start hydroponicking right away. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Um, I got multiple suppliers to go through, so whatever I don't stock on my shelves, I can order for you. Um, there's no doubt about that. Um, so if I can get you hydroponic gardening, I can even set it up for you at your house. I've done that. Um, you know, I'll... You do anything to get you growing hydroponic, hydroponically indoors or outdoors. And that's the thing, too. Hydroponic gardening doesn't have to be just indoors. You can do it outdoors, whether it be in a greenhouse or outside of a greenhouse. Um, there are ways to do it outdoors as so well. So you can even, th th all the summer, growing it outdoors yes. and not dealing with the, the soil. Right. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest problems with gardening in, in Bella Vista is we don't have soil. <laughs> we have rocks and yes. we have uh, clay. And uh, if we can grow things easier in, in hydroponics than we can with uh, this terrible, you know, 
on the soil that we have. It's not really soil because you have to bring in so much to, to have a good vegetable garden yeah. in uh, Bella Vista. You're going to, so. in order to have a garden out here that I noticed is you got to do a raised bed. Right. And that can cost some money as well. So mm -hmm. you, at that point, you might as well invest into a hydroponic system and keep something that you can move from indoors outdoors. Now, is there a way to test the nutrients um, that you're applying? Yes, there is. Um, there is what you call a PPM meter or EC reader, which is electric conductivity and then um, parts per million. And you want to basically kind of fall within a certain range of uh, parts per million. Um, on average, your tap water is going to run anywhere from, I want to say, 100 to 200 parts per million. And that's you, you, and that's without knowing what kind of salts are derived in there ex exactly. Mm -hmm. So because your salts are your fertilizers. Ex basically. Exactly. Most of it's a calcium magnesium that's in your tap water. Mm -hmm. um, you probably are getting some readings from the chlorine that they put in there as well. Um, it is recommended if you can dechlorinate your water prior to use. Now, how do you do that? Um, you either use a filtration system. Or you can just simply let your water sit out for a couple of days prior About to... Like two days would take the chlorine yeah, out? Yeah, Because that's the only problem I have with the water in Bella Vista. To drink it is the taste of the chlorine, so I filter it. But, yeah, exactly. Um, but in two days, it would be evaporated out. Yeah. And then, okay. like I said, you got filtration systems as well. Um, you got real simple filtration systems that will just remove the chlorine itself. Or you can get into real in-depth um, filtration system that's called an RO system. And that'll remove 99.9% .9 of uh, contaminants that are in your and water. And then you add nutrients back into the water, and then you have a, a way to test to make sure that it's balanced and, and what you need. Yes, correct. So, and you have all that information at your shop. Yep, I do. Okay. Yep. This is, it gets a little bit technical, you know, but I guess <laughs> after you get the feel of it and the, you know, the basics of it, it's, it's going to be pretty easy. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Once, you get, once you get the feel of it, like you said, it, it's definitely different than your, your traditional gardening. You it know? certainly is. Well, it's very interesting. So we'll have to try it and see what happens. Because um, right now it's uh, January and we're not doing much in our garden. So this may be a good time to actually start the hydroponics and um, you know, start experimenting with it. Oh, yes. Since we can't work out in the garden um, you know, too much in January. But there are a few things we need to to um, keep in mind, if we do get some heavy ice and snow, it's, you know, winter's coming, and they say this is going to be a worse winter than last year. I can't believe it, but yeah. last year was a terrible, terrible winter. It was so cold. Uh, but if you get heavy accumulations of snow on your plants, you can remove some of that. If, it's, if your plants are drooping, you maybe take a broom and, and kind of tap it underneath the the, uh, the limbs and get some of the snow off so before it bends and, or breaks your branches. But the ice, you don't want to uh, try to take ice off your plants if it's icy, uh, if we have freezing rain, because that's just going to break your, your plants. So you just have to let that melt. And um, sometimes the branches will bend so much and you think they'll break, but then they do come back. So yeah, I have just, noticed that. Yeah. So. Um, and then if you hit, if you see any burned foliage, now you've you've gardened other than hydroponics too, so you yes. know about the burned foliage. If you see that, you just don't. I would just leave that on. Leave there it on. You know, take care of it when it warms up. Right in the spring, you can take that off, and and um, and then if you did um, plant anything recently, if you had some. Uh, bushes and, and shrubs that you, or trees that you've planted uh, this past year, you want to monitor the water. And if we don't have any rain or, or snow, we need to make sure that they do have adequate water over the winter. And uh, mulch will help with that too. So yeah. Now you don't mulch any of your hydroponics, do you? No, no need for mulching. So that's another savings, you yeah. don't have to mulch. But in the garden, we have to, we right. have to mulch and, and keep our plants uh, mulched to keep them warm and keep them moist so but winter time is basically just a good time to just curl up with some hot chocolate or hot tea or whatever and and look at your calendar and and see what the uh, the uh, check your mail and get your catalogs out and see what you want to plant maybe take a trip to 
the hydro and brew and start a new uh, new way to garden. And yeah. Because, you know, cooks love to have fresh herbs to garden with all the time. And it's just oh, great yes. to have that all, all year round. So, and if um, you're looking for more information on gardening, you can always go to the uh, Master Gardener website. It's bentoncountygardening.org. And it's filled with gardening information. And uh, Jana Carson has her, her um, information on there about what to do every month. And the Bella Vista Garden Club is in January. The meeting, first meeting of the year is in January. Uh, it's Wednesday the 28th, and uh, Jason's gonna be there, and he's going to do an extended uh, program on hydroponics. So if you are interested in more information on hydroponics and, and getting more into the de details and, and demonstrations, Jason will be there and um, put on a, an extended uh, hydroponics program. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. That's um, going to be a, a good a good It's going to be more in depth. Um, you right. know, hopefully I'll have my PowerPoint. Because we've just basically skimmed the surface with this. It's, yeah. There's a lot to it. Oh, yes. No, and there's also systems where you have a fish tank and the fish is feeding the water. Yeah, that's the aquaponics end of it. Um, I haven't personally gotten involved in that, but I know I know about it. Yeah. Um, it is, that's the more sustainable way of, of getting into um, hydroponic It's a big days. system, yes. usually. Yeah, okay. and it can require a big system. So, but we'll get more information at the meeting. And um, it's uh, at the Lutheran Church on Cooper Road in um, Forest Hills. Starts at 11, and we have a, a social time at 11. About 11.30, we start a little meeting. 12 o'clock, we have a little luncheon. And um, anyone's welcome. You know, we have a lot of members now. We have 101 members, so. Uh, but any, anyone's welcome to come to the meetings. And um, it, we also have a great website, it's bellavistagardenclub.com, and there's a lot of information on, the, on our website about gardening and, and uh, organic gardening and any, just about any subject you're, you're interested in. And um, thank you, Jason, for joining us today. Well, this is really that. interesting to, to see these beautiful plants growing in the middle of winter, you know, and it's, uh, they look so good. I want to take them home and put them in my salad. <laughs> I appreciate they it. They look really good. Thanks for having me on the show. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the show. And if you have any subject that you'd like to have us cover that we haven't covered in the past and want more information on, you can email us at bvgarden club at gmail.com and uh, we'll try to work that into our, our um, schedule for the year. We've got it basically set up, but there could be a subject that we haven't covered that you're, you would like to have uh, more information on and, and, and uh, we'd be glad to do that for you. And until then, um, I hope you join us next month and uh, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. <laughs>